Hello. Why don't you take a seat and tell me what appears to be the problem. Welcome to another exciting new episode of Consult the Doctor, where I have four questions that I think all warrant an answer, because all of these are pretty interesting. I'm just writing down a timestamp. The first one I have... Imagine I have a pen that has a, a, a piston or some sort of built-in filling system, but I cannot open the pen from either end. Can I just suck up some oil through the nib to lubricate the piston or whatever other filling system? Under no circumstances should you do that. That is the most horrible idea ever, and I fully understand where it comes from, and I'm not making fun. I immediately responded to this person as soon as I saw the question. If you are new to fountain pens, that sounds like a logical idea, right? You just suck, suck up some sort of oil, whatever, whatever it is, olive oil, canola oil, motor oil, I don't care. And then it will lubricate the piston because it ends up in the ink reservoir. However, be aware that if you do that, you will get oil in your feed, and oil has an annoying tendency, which is that it doesn't really mix well with water. Remember those pictures where you have water with olive oil and then there is just water at the bottom and olive oil just floating on top? It doesn't work. So if you do that, you would severely hamper the flow of your pen and you may actually end up with a pen that does not write or writes extremely poorly. So if you find yourself in that situation, maybe send it out to be serviced by someone if your piston doesn't work send it to an experienced pen repair person if you google fountain pen repair you will find people typically private individuals they will be able to do something they may be able to get the nib out they may be able to help you out but please for the love of saint nibius do not suck up oil through the nib okay next question can I use car feeler gauges as uh, shims? So this, people put brass shims in between the tines of a nib in the slit to kind of expand the gap between the two tines a little bit. That makes the pen a bit wetter. Some people use that to floss it to kind of get paper residue out. The answer is yes, you can. Just make sure that you use very fine gauges so you're talking 0.001 of an inch maybe 0.002 of an inch but typically not much more than that so you're looking at something tiny it sounds like an incredibly tiny tiny um, thickness and that's because it is because the fountain pen nib has a tiny gap it really shouldn't be more than than that that you use in a nutshell okay um, next one Can you recommend a fountain pen paper? I couldn't remember and I haven't checked if I had done that before, but it's fine to once in a while, even if I had to kind of redo that to, to, to maybe reorganize my own thoughts on that topic. This person actually used photocopier paper and was happy with it. If you're happy with it, there's no reason to, to change anything, right? But copier paper can work. It can also feather a lot. It can bleed a lot. It's not always the best option for a fountain pen, but if you only use, say, extra fine nibs or pretty dry inks, there may also not be anything wrong with copier paper. Now, if you want nice, nicer papers, there are a couple of papers that I've come to really like over the years, and they may not all be available where you live, but then you may have to go online. Rhodia, a German paper, very nice paper. They do use a coating, and those coatings are not for everyone. It makes for very smooth paper, but it doesn't play very nicely with some pens but if you use broad nibs wetter inks no no problem broader nibs i should say claire fontaine very nice paper triomphe what is it the triomphe that's something claire fontaine french maker very nice papers um j'ai la lo verger de france very nice paper but that is laid paper that does not mean it is really happy it means that it has sort of ribs in the paper which some people really like but that's the type of texture that not everybody loves i like that paper a lot though these are classic papers they've been around for quite a while people like them there are other options oxford 
paper is really nice smooth coated paper that is surprisingly affordable and that works really well I've used other papers over the years um, I currently from my reviews I am using paper I'll just show you by this brand Ayush um, Ayush paper it's an Indian brand very nice paper there are many options out there uh, but that is certainly some of the paper that I have come to value and appreciate the most this lineup of brands again there are many other options that people love um, why am I fully blanking the tip of the tongue phenomenon is one of the most annoying things in the world Tomoe River that's what I wanted to say I knew I knew the name but I couldn't figure Tomoe River kind of went under now it's kind of brought back Japanese paper very nice a lot of the Japanese papers are quite nice tend to be quite thin but function really well no feathering no bleeding really nice so there are options try out different things I, I used to be at work uh, in, in the Netherlands they had just sort of from the massive office supply company <coughs> that supplied the university they had a brand called Lyrico L-Y-R-E-C-O Lyrico that was very thin paper but it was outstanding for fountain pens so if you can find that that was great and I think it was only 50 or 60 grams per square meter which is on the low end of fountain pen friendly paper usually you're looking at something like 80 grams per square meter or more this was fantastic paper smooth and pleasant to use I, I really liked it um, I should see if I can find that somewhere anyway try out some different options is what I would say because the coating is nice but not everybody likes it coating can bring out the sheen of a ink very well if you like that sort of thing so there are options but you need to find what works best for you okay the final question I have this I thought was an interesting one someone asked about uh, they count the fills of their pen so they said my 149 is in fill 262 and they asked I'm not sure if the question was do other people do this is this something you do is it uh, are there opinions on it well here's what I would say um, I don't do it in a way I actually think it's kind of fun if you keep track from the start how many times you've inked a pen that's kind of an interesting statistic to have for yourself because it gives you insight in how how long you've had the pen but also how how often you use it and I think that's pretty neat so I kind of like that as an idea I've never done it and I'm very curious the people watching this video if this is something you do because it is interesting now what I will address is something that comes up once in a while with these kinds of questions uh, I'm not saying that was the question of this particular person but is this normal well I'm a psychologist so we don't use the word normal do we we do use completely insane actually we don't either but you get the point what works for you does not necessarily work for other people in this case you're not doing any harm you're not bothering anyone clearly there's nothing offensive about that behavior so I would have zero concerns about it even though yeah it may not be the most common of things to, to do but it's kind of interesting and like I said I don't see any issues with it I think it's kind of fun and there are some pens I kind of wish I had done that with but I didn't remember the four D's deviance danger distress dysfunction the more of those describe a behavior the more troublesome it is I see no deviance here really certainly no danger absolutely no distress unless you lose count and that really upsets you uh, and I don't see anything dysfunctional so I don't think there is anything quote unquote wrong with this behavior uh, I've never heard of anyone doing it but that does not mean anything that just indicates that I have not heard of anyone doing that so again I would really love to hear from people who are watching this video is this something you do do you count the number of fills of your pen and how's it going because I would love to see someone who says oh yeah yeah I'm on fill 159,873 for my platinum preppy or something anyway there we are I hope this was somewhat useful if you have any other questions please leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can I hope this was useful and I will gladly see you later bye